hey welcome to my channel in this video we're going to talk about five mistakes that new bug bounty hunters usually make the first one's going to be dealing with bypassing filters so let's go ahead and jump into it so let's go ahead and talk about the filter bypass i have pulled open a hack the box here i'm not going to show you how we got here because that's not really the point but inside of messing with the filter bypass if we come in here it tells us we can upload something and it tells us we can upload a JPEG, a GIF, or a PNG. So I've already set this up so it doesn't take a lot of time. We upload this file right here and we wanna see what it looks like. So we turn our interceptor on and we intercept this. We'll send it to repeater so we can look at it in just a little bit. And then we can come to our interceptor, turn it off. It tells us that it has worked. So we know that it accepts a GIF. It told us that it accepts a GIF and it went ahead and told us that it worked. So now, let's say we want to upload a PHP shell and we see that it's using PHP right here. If we come to this image upload and we choose a PHP web shell and then we go ahead and open the file and then we submit it, it tells us it's an invalid file. I actually don't remember what's inside there, so we'll cat this web shell just like this and it's just a basic web shell. I wasn't sure what was in there, so I wanted to check it. So we have that in there. It tells us that it's an invalid file, so it doesn't work. But what we can do is do that again, and then we'll catch it inside of our burp interceptor, and we'll look at it and see what the difference is. And so we can send this to repeater. A lot of times, if you're new, what will happen is you will just give up. You'll be like, oh, it's an invalid file. It doesn't work. and Sometimes maybe you'll come in here and you'll play with this and you'll say, oh, web, it says web.php. And so you'll type in like uh, maybe it said it takes a GIF or a PNG.php and you'll send this and see if it works. And it's an invalid file, bummer, doesn't work. And then you move on. But there's a lot of different ways to bypass these filters. So I recommend just playing around with it. And a lot of times when you're new, you just don't know what to do and you don't really think through bypassing filters. So you got to think, okay, why did this one work right here? When we send this, it works. It says the file uploaded and this one doesn't. Well, let's look at the difference between what happens in each one of the post requests. So we come in here and it says that the file name is a GIF and the content type is a GIF. And then we have our magic bytes right here. And so what we could do is just copy these right here and say, well, we'll just add this to the front of our request right here. We'll change our content type, we'll paste this in, and we can delete this PNG and just say, let's see what happens. We send it and we have now bypassed the filter. So this is one way to bypass a filter and there are many ways to bypass filters. And it might not be a bad idea to just go out and read somebody's GitHub notes on bypassing filters. There's a way to bypass filters for cross-site scripting, SSRF, file uploads, and many different ways. So whenever you encounter an exploit that you think should work, just go and look up how to bypass filters and see what you come across. You will be surprised at how much is on the internet and will help you bypass filters. Sometimes it'll be black listed sometimes it'll be a flaw within the code that was written you just never know so just spend time looking up how to bypass filters for whatever exploit you're attacking so this is number one giving up too easily and not checking for filter bypasses i see this a lot with new people and beginners in the hacking world is they just try something and it doesn't work and then move on and sometimes that's okay because it may not actually be vulnerable but you really have to dive into an exploit and the next time you come to a place that has that specific vulnerability you already know how to attack it and the different ways to approach it and the intermediate bug bounty course that i'm currently working on should be out i'm hoping next week and so there's a lot of different ways to bypass filters and there's one that's really popular especially among ctfs is a php wrapper and if you don't know what that is, then you can go ahead and Google it or you can subscribe. And I'll make my next video on bypassing with PHP wrappers. They're actually really helpful. You'll see them a lot inside of CTFs. So if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button and we'll see that coming up very soon. And that leads us right in to the second mistake most new bug bounty hunters make. And that is ignoring what you don't understand. You just ignore it instead of look up what you don't understand. So I said something like PHP wrapper, you're like, hmm, I don't know what that is, or maybe you do. And you just ignore it and you don't look it up. In the world of bug bounty hunting and hacking in general, you need to get really used to looking up everything 
you don't understand and reading about it until you do. And maybe it'll take several days of reading about something, watching some YouTube videos, not understanding it, coming back a couple of days later and reading again and doing research. And it might take you a little while to understand a specific exploit. I know this happens to me, but I just don't give up. You just keep coming back to it until you understand. So you need to make sure and look up the things that you're not understanding. Third mistake that usually new bug bounty hunters make or even penetration testers is they do way too little recon, especially in the bug bounty world. If you're attacking a big target, you're going to have to do a lot of recon in order to reach the pages that are the least likely to have been traveled. So recon Recon will be your friend and in the recon world really Jason Haddix is the go-to and I'll link in the description some of his content down there and you can go to his channel he is an expert at recon and it's kind of the go-to place for learning how to do good recon for bug bounty hunting so when you're new to bug bounty hunting you're gonna want to do a lot of recon and looking at different web pages you're gonna want to do a lot of fuzzing there's just a lot that needs to go into it so I would say for at least if you're gonna spend one hour trying to find vulnerabilities do one hour of recon and make a flow chart that will help you remember how to do your recon and then the places you have been so recon is one area that new bug bounty hunters often struggle with they just want to go right in and start trying to find vulnerabilities but when you're new you need to go the places that have the least amount of activity because you're more likely to find a bug there and this leads into our next mistake that new bug bounty hunters often make and that is you jump right into the paid programs it's really normal to say you know what if I'm gonna do this I want to get paid for it and so you start looking at the ones that have paid eligibility programs that's really not where your focus should be what you should do is say what is the newest program and this is one of the things hacker one doesn't offer is to filter by the newest programs but look for the newest programs that are available i think bug crowd actually offers this if you want to look at their programs just look for the newest programs they're going to be the least likely to have been traveled they're going to be the least likely to have had a bunch of vulnerabilities submitted and look at these new programs first and then if you don't really feel like any of those new programs fit your area of expertise and you don't really want to look at those then look for unpaid programs because the top bug bounty hunters are obviously going to go to the paid programs and you should look for the places where you will see the least amount of traffic which is going to be the newest programs and the unpaid programs and then do a lot of good recon on them to get to places where most people haven't tested my final tip for you and mistake that i see new bug bounty hunters make they want to spend their time hacking and that is great spend as much time as you can in the hacker one programs and in bug crowd and just look around for vulnerabilities but remember that you can't find what you don't know and so when you're new you need to spend just as much time reading about vulnerabilities on hacker one's activity with doing walkthroughs on hack the box going through port swigger listening to lectures and really studying as best as you can web application penetration testing if you don't know what a file upload is and you don't know how to bypass filters then you're not gonna be able to find those vulnerabilities you will need to spend a significant amount of time researching and learning all the time there are still top bug bounty hunters that will spend at least half of their time reading just to learn about new vulnerabilities and then the other half of their time actually out trying to find bugs and as a new bug bounty hunter you're often just going to want to go out and start finding bugs as fast as you can and that is great you can focus on just one bug in the beginning and that is great as well but in order to continue learning and, and getting better you're going to need to read even if you only are looking for something like sql injection there are a lot of ways to pull off sql injection and you can can continue to read and research how to pull off these exploits and continue to grow and get better so there it is there are my five mistakes that i think new bug bounty hunters often struggle with and if you're interested in learning about bug bounty hunting and penetration testing then please consider subscribing to my channel and i will have a new bug bounty course for intermediate to advanced learners coming out soon thanks for watching